All right. All right. There we go. Once again, I want to say good morning to everyone and thank you guys for joining in to the June webinar, uh, which is actually getting us prepared for the Dream Builders uh, portion on organizational development and behavior. Uh, you guys are going to notice that everything that I do is going to be dealing with some, so some form of psychology uh, to get that mind in position where it needs to be so that, you know, we can be effective with the people that we come in contact with. Uh, I really do believe that that's probably one of our biggest struggles in life or biggest hurdles in life that we have is that we don't always know how to effectively, you know, deal with our lives, organize our lives and our thoughts, and then the thoughts of other things that are coming in. But we know that we do have to live in this world, so they're going to have to run cohesively together, and we have to learn how to get along. I often uh, um, uh, make recognition of this movie, uh, Frankie and Alice. If you've never seen that movie before, I recommend everybody to go back and listen to it, only because I'm in the area of psychology and I always uh, try to study and understand why people do what they do, you know, so that the world not call them crazy or whatever. Uh, and the story uh, um, talks about this lady that has a multiple personality disorder and does not know that she has that. And there are a chain of events that are taking place in her life that's causing her to unravel and her behavior is, you know, kind of unseemly so much to the point where it's kind of, you know, bringing uh, alarm and attention to even her that something is wrong. And those providential moments that come into our lives when people step in and even though it may be the worst time of our lives, I really believe that God orchestrates people on, in our path. Uh, so that he can get, help us to get to the destination where we need to be. And there were a chain of providential moments that took place in this lady's life that one guy had an interest in studying um, uh, multiple personality disorder. This lady happens to be a case that he could study that was going to be, she needed to figure out what was going on as well. And they made for a good team together. And uh, as the story goes on, um, there were some places of recognition that came in about her behavior uh, that really was not who she was. It was just what she was actually going through. And what he was doing was helping her to organize her thoughts in her mind uh, to put some chain of events into place so that we can go back down what I call that rabbit trail and figure out what happened in life so that we can get out of that. Uh, my attempt during this uh, month of June is to help you guys uh, to go back and develop a timeline through journaling, through prayer, through time management and recognition to understand what has taken place in your life so that you can put things properly where they belong and you can begin to start moving on with your life. So for those of you that are brand new, I'm going to uh, do just a small introduction uh, of myself and uh, so that you guys can actually, you know, know that I am in this thing with y'all <laughs> and I do understand where you are. This is not just some hoax of anything that, you know, I am doing, but I really am in this for the long haul with you guys. Uh, first of all, just the opportunity for you guys to get a chance to meet me. Uh, again, my name is Marilyn. It's Marilyn Pettigrew, but I go by Denise. And let me, let me share with you guys for business reasons why I actually did that. Uh, Pettigrew is my, is my married name. And eventually I know that I do desire to be married again. And so just for legal purposes, for all of the contracts that I have, whatever, I chose to take the Pettigrew off of there and I just go by my first and middle name. So uh, for those of you that are wondering, why does she call it Maryland Denise Services? That was the that was the um, the kind of the legal and the business reason for doing that. And plus I like the name anyway. <laughs> So anyway, uh, one of the things um, to learn about the coaching services that I actually offer is that uh, one of the things that I noticed is that, you know, individuals just like myself uh, really needed to get back in what I call the game of life because, you know, life can shift us. It can, um, you know, cause a redefinement of who we are and we may not even understand those things and it causes us to be really, really thrown off. Uh, you know, in places and other people begin to start judging it. So uh, my design was that what if somebody else is going through this just like I am and other people are actually defining them in ways that are really, really not true. And so I developed these programs to help people kind of get back in the game of life and explore the possibilities and fulfillment 
that's available for all of us in every season of our lives. Uh, living a life of freedom is what we are normally called. And what we're doing, we are developing strategies to live life uh, free from worry, doubt, fear, anxieties, and take us to a place of where we all belong. Knowing that freedom does come with the responsibility, that's my part that I play with you guys. I come in to be that hard driver, you know, to kind of get it across, get it going. Let's, let's get moving. Let's get this thing going. Let's, let's don't stay stuck. But I try to do it in a manner of love uh, to understand that even though I know the importance of you taking this medicine and what this outcome is going to be later on, you may not know the importance of it. So it's going to be important for me to allow you guys to see who I am actually as a person. Uh, first of all, I am a native of Tyler, Texas, which is about 90 miles east of Dallas, Texas. We're right in between Shreveport, Louisiana and Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm a graduate of John Tyler High School, a graduate of three uh, there. We were the first ninth graders to come on campus, so we're always proud to talk about that all the time. Uh, I attended the University of Texas at Tyler, uh, started out with my major in business. I absolutely do not like business at all, and eventually, when, when it, well, I started out in psychology. By the time I got to UT Tyler, I changed it to business because that, that's the stream that I had been in my career. And I'm like, no, I don't like that. I like psychology. I want to stay right there. Uh, I am currently continuing my education at Dallas Baptist. Dallas Baptist back in business again, combined with, uh, combined with uh, communication and psychology. All of those things are rolling together. Um, my family, I'm a mother of three. Uh, I have four grandchildren, and then I got one beautiful little grand, great granddaughter now, Mrs. Anila, and y'all probably see me posting pictures of her on the page all the time. Um, I was married in 20, uh, uh, 2003. Uh, our marriage ended in 2010. Um, Emmett and I actually got back together again and uh, tried to, you know, make things work, but instead we became the best of friends. So uh, that relationship ended there. Uh, most of my career has been in the medical field and education. Uh, I just say that that's just who I am, uh, that it's like, I just know those things. I don't know how instinctively, and most of the time, these are the people that I attract. I either attract educators into my life, or I attract people from the medical field, or I attract business owners or executive leaders. I, that's just been the makeup. I learned those things later. I didn't know that at first. I learned these things later. Uh, I currently work for Cummins Sales and Service as the executive uh, admin, admin uh, for the Dallas branch. Uh, I work with actually the general managers that are there, and uh, it's probably one of the easiest jobs I have ever, ever had. I think I went through my early seasons of, of organization development within me, understanding who I am. I learned the ins and outs of organization. I learned the organization of a person's mind, the people that you're working with, so that I could be the best servant that they actually needed. Um, I started my first outreach ministry in 2013, which is called Ultimate Connections, and then later on developed a mentorship in 2015, and this is where you guys have actually dropped into that. Um, as it relates to the mentoring, where it began, um, all of that, um, I think our journeys are filled with a lot of twists and turns in life, a lot of ups and downs, thoughts of lost opportunities, sometimes even anxiety and apprehensions about our future. This is where it all started. Started on a little lonely road, you know, to where trying to find my way, wanted to know what was going on, something wasn't making sense. I wasn't attracting all kinds of people. I felt the uh, feeling of rejection a whole lot, didn't understand it. I knew that I was a good person. I knew that I had great qualities, but it was a hit and miss. Those times when I tried to make myself fit in with others, it never worked. But then there was a there was an automatic flow of people coming in. It was for some reason I was rejecting them, didn't really receive them in like I should. And so I had to meet in the middle to figure out where are these two components coming together. So starting out on this lonely road right here, I actually got a chance to learn things about myself. Uh, God brought some wonderful, wonderful people into my life uh, that took the time out with, with me, pastors, leaders. I've been up under the best, best leadership that you could imagine on the jobs. Uh, some of them were hard taskmasters, but I just believe that what God had for me, that God was not going to let anything happen to me, anything. So those tough ones, 
they made me strong later on in life because I knew that I was going to need that discipline along the way. So one of the things that I've learned about life is that your mind must arrive at your destination before your life does. Your mind has got to go there first before you actually get there. And this means there has to be a transitional time taking place. So this month, we're gonna be looking at what we call organizational behavior and development, uh, which has a lot to do with this journey that you guys are on. You know, some people look at it, what kind of mentoring program does she actually have? You know, look like she's into personal development, look like she's in the business part of it, all of that. Uh, I wanna kind of take you guys back just a little bit before we actually get on this particular PowerPoint. Um, what I noticed was there was a multifacet of um, gifts that God had placed on my life that I knew nothing about, absolutely nothing about. All I knew that was I love people, I like order, I like to be treated a certain way, and then I noticed there was, a, there was something in me that demanded other people to do the same things with me. So during that time, um, I started noticing those kind of people started being attracted to the things that I had. And not only were they being attracted, they were coming in and they were grabbing nuggets. They were sticking in uh, to be a part of the programs for long periods of time because there were layers that had to come off of them. You know, you have to take out time with people when it comes down to healing and getting people in the right place where they belong. So there was a lot of stages that had to be developed in the midst of it. And later on, I noticed that majority of the people that have, I say, graduated mentally from my program, they're not physically away from it. These people went on to be business owners. They went on to oh my God, I've got three or four ladies that went in and just all of a sudden got their realtor's license. And when I tell you kicking butt, absolute butt, just to tell a testament about one of the young ladies, and I've met these people along my journey. One of the young ladies, she's a, she's a Caucasian lady. Uh, she used to be a part of a group setting within my church, in the church that I attended. And this lady was going through uh, alcohol, drugs, um, when, by the time I met her, uh, she was in the court system. She was in a very abusive relationship and really needed, you know, some mothering. Most of the time, that's what I find these young ladies are needing mothering around them. And it was something about it. She just had a beautiful personality. I knew that she had something different in her. Wasn't quite sure why she was attracting all these negative things into her life that was causing all these spiraled events. And what happened was her lack of time management or lack, a lack of dealing with the organized uh, or the things that were going in her life and organizing them in the proper places was causing her to lose time. She was behind in schedule in her life. So anyway, I come in to bring order. That's one of the first things that I noticed that God has gifted me with. I bring order to the settings with people because if you're doing something that really doesn't make sense or it's not getting you where you need to be, I think you need to go back and reassess that process of whatever it is. Anyway, it was a long journey because this young lady, she ended up you know, having to uh, be put on probation. Uh, I think she had like a 10 year probation, but we were glad that she did not have to do any jail time because she's had little children, different things like that. Later on as life goes on, um, I leave the church, but I don't leave these ladies behind. This particular lady stayed close to me. She stayed close to the mentorship. She got into the mentorship part of it, going through the development, the organizing, getting these things in place. Y'all, we look up, this was just two years ago. She came in and she said, "Miss Marilyn, I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm going to go back in and try to get my license for my realty license. So sure enough, she went in, she failed that test a couple of times, but man, when she went in, she, she aced that test that last time. Well, let me tell you what God was doing along the way. Okay. The more you start moving the wrong things out of your life, the more good things start coming in in between her time of struggle, because I imagine it was probably more mental. She, it wasn't that she didn't know the information. Sometimes you just got a lot of events, things in life that cause you to be thrown off. Anyway, the right people start coming into our life. She started developing relationship with a young lady that passed her test the first time that was male. She was, um, when I tell you she was selling 
uh, when I tell you major homes, big homes, like they were in the three, four, five thousand dollar range. And uh, this girl dared that she could do it all. So she had the personality, she had the charisma, she had the smile, she had all of the outer, outer things. It was that inside that had to be developed. Sure enough, when I tell you that girl is kicking butt right now on her real, all, all of her sales. And the first one she came in, listen at this. I always think about, you know, when they talk about how uh, the lepers had, you know, gone before the priest, you know, about, you know, this, this leprosy that was on them. And they were told to go show themselves to the priest. And it says that as they went, they trusted God with this. They knew that they needed the help. They said that healing, they were healed as they went. But they said only one came back to say thank you. This young girl and many other ladies have come back to say thank you. She came in, brought in her first tithes into this place. And when I tell you, I just thought about it yesterday. Every time I turn around, that girl is selling a home. And she's not just selling no rinky deep nothing. Your mind must arrive at your destination before your life does. It's a place where I come back to say thank you. Thank you for all of that. And all that's been happening ever since I've been doing this, people come in to be healed. They stay through the year, through the process of it all. And when it's all done, the dream builders, that's where dream builders came in. I said, God, there's another phase of this thing of living a life of freedom. These people are actually starting ministries. They're getting married to some wonderful, when I tell you some wonderful people, they're developing some, some, some relationships that are amazing. But how did they get there? It all started with this place called Organ Organizational Development, Behavior and Development. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, first of all, we're going to start, we're going to look at how do we define organizational behavior. And guys, just know that this is my personal walk and these are some of the personal nuggets that God has given to me. You know how it is when you read something, uh, you need to make that thing applicable to your life and make it fitting for you. And that's what I've done. I've taken a few excerpts from things that I have learned. And then I went back in to see how God actually allowed me to walk through this. So how do I define organizational behavior? It really is the study of human behavior within any organization. The way we act at home, on our jobs, in our church, any group setting, our relationships, our money, the, your behavior with your money, all of that, okay? And what does our behavior consist of? It's one's in, in external reaction to its environment, okay? And I need to do that typo there to it's in your reaction to your environment, how you look at home, how you look at the work at workplace, how you look at church. What about those groups that you're around? I don't like to be around a lot of people, all of those things, you know, your money, how do you look at money? You know, I ain't never had none when some come in, I don't have a definition for it. I'm not organizing my thoughts about where this money is supposed to go because all I did was ask for it. I didn't ask God for it. I didn't have, I didn't have no specific plan for it, anything. That's where budgeting comes in. You need to have some type of organizational thought for what you need these things for so that when you need more, more will begin to start coming in. Let me tell you, you are an automatic attractor for what you need when you get your mind right. So what does our behavior consist of also? It's our behavior is something that can be, what it can be observed. You're gonna pick it up and see, once you start noticing it in you, you're gonna start noticing it in the people around you. Not that you're being judgmental of them, but we do need to be fruit inspectors to make sure that we are going in the same direction with one another. So the next thing is we look at, uh, we go in also, it's, it's, what, it's what you see or hear, your behavior. Okay, it's some things that I actually observe. For instance, a person sitting down, I observe them, I observe their stance, I understand uh, whether they're paying attention, whether they're slouched over, you know, you know, whether they're looking around at everybody else and, you know, all those kind of things. The way you stand. Uh, there was a young lady that uh, she's actually in my personal coaching class and um, uh, her coming in it is somewhat surprising to me. But I do understand that we can have a professional, uh, um, a, a, a professional uh, way of, of handling life, but we don't necessarily recognize that those things are within us. So she had, when she first came in, I'll never forget, she had a, um, uh, her head was down, 
Um, her, her self-esteem was not really, you know, very good about herself, but I saw something different in her. I said, I don't know who been speaking into your life, but they lying. Somebody lying on you. The way you stand. See, because when I went back and I started observing her pictures and going back through her family, photos and all of that, man, when I tell you, I saw a confident woman. I saw someone that stood with poise. And I couldn't understand why she's in these executive positions that she's in. But somewhere, something has torn her down. She said it's not her family. And I could see that. The family, they were, they were doing very well together. It must be something internal that's going on. So the way you speak, one of the things that I noticed that there was a, there was a strong tremor in her voice uh, when we would talk. And, and then another thing, she did not she did not have eye contact with me. Uh, that's always something that means that there's fear in you somewhere or there's a, a lack of connection that's there for whatever reason. Sometimes it could be rejection. Uh, also, the way you whisper, the way you talk. And, you know, there are some people that they, you know, talk very low and you have to ask them to speak up. You know, what did you say? Or they're always whispering about someone. We're talking about behavior here. All of these things are going to tell a story. Even the way you talk loud, the way you, you talk to people, but you're yelling at them. And a lot of times what you're noticing that people are kind of looking at you kind of strange. It's not the words that you're using. It's the approach that you use. Sometimes you're too strong. You know how when you drink coffee, sometimes, oh, that thing got too much of a kick in it. Our behavior, or even the way that people write. People, that, that's, a, that's a, a, a behavior, that's something that you observe in behaviors. One of the things that in that movie, Frankie and Alice, uh, the way that the doctor was able to tell that something was wrong with her was that when they went, that he went back in to check the signatures. I don't know what made him do that, but he went back in to check the signatures at every time she checked in, because she was coming in quite a bit to a behavior center. That's what it was. And he noticed that the, that the signatures was wrong. One looked like a little old bitty girl. And the other one looked like a sophisticated lady. And that's when he started noticing that there are multiple people that are checking in, but they checking in with the same name, okay? So, so we look at this and the next thing is, how do we define organizational development? So the next thing is, all right, I get it. Behavior, it plays a big part of it. So how do I go in and develop, you know, what it is that I need when it comes down to, you know, the people that I'm interacting with, you know, maybe my tone of voice that I'm using, I got to develop the right way to go about these things. So organization must start first from the top to increase any form of organizational effectiveness. It's got to start with you. It doesn't start with other people. It always starts with you. And then, huh? Uh -uh. Yeah, it is, but you can use it. Yeah. And then the next thing is, it's the cohesive glue that allows matters to stick together. See, the Bible says, can two walk together except they agree, okay? When you start making up your mind that you're gonna do something different, okay? They're, they're, they, we gotta start from the top. This thing has to be fitting for you. You don't have to necessarily always look outside the window at everyone else, and that's normally what we do. Remember I shared with you guys last week, we normally bring the hat to the table that we're accustomed to wearing all the time, but that may not be the occasion for this. You know, it would be silly for you to wear your church hat to the beach, okay? Or it would be silly of you to put your baseball hat on when you getting ready to deliver a baby. Knowing the right place, ain't nothing wrong with the hat. It's, the, it's, it's where you are unfolding these things at. So there has to be some type of cohesive glue that brings this thing into place that it makes sense. And then I can run with this thing. So what does our development consist of? One, you gotta have some planned intervention. I recognize something is wrong. There needs to be some form of intervention coming in. And then I gotta start understanding my behavior. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing during our time together, we're gonna bring in recognition to your behavior, okay? For instance, the way you wake up in the morning time, okay? Are you using your time effectively or are you just running off the cuff? You know, it's morning time, I need to get up. See, because your natural man was telling you all these things that you had done, you didn't get done, but you never allowed your spiritual man to help you to bring these things in, a, in alignment. The Bible says to be still and know that he is God. So sometimes, like on Saturday morning, today was 
was a prime example. Today, when you get up, that's a place to call relaxation. We need to get ready to rest from our labor. Once you have put in a lot of efforts all week long and you've done a lot, you got to be able to let that stuff sink in. All the information that you guys received over the month of May, you got to give that, that stuff time to sink in. In. So we go in and we start putting in plan intervention. Okay, all the things that we're learning, wax on, wax off. We're getting ready to transfer that in to the month of June or the lessons that you have learned in life. We're going to put in some planned intervention, meaning I want to kind of get a time schedule on what I'm doing every day, how I'm going about governing my day. As a matter of fact, I want to get a Fitbit so that I can pay attention to what my sleeping patterns are. You know, even if I'm eating wrong, I want to know what is it that I'm eating. If I'm not getting the effect that I want, I want to go back and check my behavior from the days before. I'm going to develop a planned intervention with this, and then I'm going to understand my behavior. And the last thing is we're going to be learning ways to, to uh, take a greater responsibility for your own action. All the stuff that you've been going through, all the things that you've been experiencing, all of that, yeah, it's there, but you still got to go back and take responsibility because nobody's going to be responsible for your happiness. So the topics for this month that we're going to talk about is personal organizational development. Remember, it starts at the top. It starts with you. Then we're going to go into approaches to organizational behavior. Okay. What, what that means is how, how, how I'm going to go to the chat. I think people are chatting as well. All right, let's go in there. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to go in and talk about the approaches to organizational behavior. Where do I start? At? Oh my God! Our, our, everything she's talking about right now—that's me. I, I, it's like I'm I'm sick of this. I woke up this day. It's still the same thing. It's going on. Approaches. What are approaches are we going to take to organizational behavior? And then we're going to start organizing according to desires. See, you got to get what you what you what you, what you desire in front of you. You know, that's what Habakkuk, remember in the book of Habakkuk uh, 2, it talked about how Habakkuk had gone before the Lord and he was complaining, you know, how long, Lord, how long are we going to go through this? How long are you going to sit back and watch this instruction? And he noticed that God wasn't saying a thing because the Bible says that everything that pertains to life and godliness, oh, did I tell y'all this was a spiritual program? Everything we do, we do according to the word of God. He said, everything that pertains to life and godliness is already down on the inside of you. So as Habakkuk is complaining about all of these things, eventually Habakkuk, Habakkuk comes to himself. He says, okay, God, because God ain't saying nothing back anyway. He's allowing him to vent. He says, I'll stand back and I'll, I'll take my watch. And the very moment that Habakkuk silenced himself, this is when the Lord started speaking. He said, Habakkuk, write the vision down. What is that you've been seeing? Organizational development. Plan, implementing a plan, write the vision down and make it plain. Stop scrambling with your words and your thoughts. Stop jumping back and forward. I want you to make it plain. Matter of fact, I've heard what you say it. I need you to put that down on paper so that you can keep saying it to yourself. He said, make it plain so that when others read it, because what you're really wanting is a change in environment. So when you get ready to present yourself back to people, you need to make this thing plain so that when others read it, that they can run with it. And so that's one of the first thing. You have to have a desire to get things right. You got to take your responsibility in it because, you know, I always say it takes two to make a thing go wrong. And sometimes we have allowed uh, the projections of others, the, the comments of others uh, to filtrate our heart and get us into some negative places. And we don't even understand that, you know, all they did was brought a suggestive suggestion in. They, they projected their suggestion. It didn't make it right. And it may not have been wrong, but it does matter what's been going on with my life before now, because some of us stick to every thought that people come in. No, 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 I'm organizing my mind. And what's not of me, I'm going to give that back to wherever it belongs, and I'm going to eat the fish in it, I'm going to get the part that belongs to me, I'm going to get the spoils out of it, and I'm going to keep on running on. And then the last thing we're going to deal with is team organization behavior. Who's traveling with you? Okay? You need to find the people that have the right heartbeat for what needs to be done. And what you're going to do while you're paying attention to you, you're learning to have patience for you. You're going to start picking up cues from other people, paying attention to what other people are playing. Guys, one of the things you're going to learn within this is uh, uh, your family's love language, your children's love language, your mate's love language, your coworkers' love language. Because all this thing is about love. 
Remember the Bible said, they asked the question, what is the greatest command? And the Lord said, to love, thy, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, and thy soul. And then he said, but I give you a greater command, which is going to be even stronger once you've done that. He said, learn how to love your neighbor as you love yourself. See, that soulless realm has to be developed during this time to where you start loving you, you start caring about you, you start understanding that people don't just do stuff. There's a, there's a rhyme and a reason. Now, I don't need to take responsibility for what they're doing. I'm taking responsibility for me and what I'm going to do, I'm going to show them an image of what this can look like. So now what I'm going to get ready to do is be effective with the people in my home or team organizational development. Those people in my house, everyone doesn't understand love. Exactly. But guys, you got to remember, you have to teach people how to treat you. Okay. I used to, I remember my old pastor used to say, it doesn't matter how other people treat me. It matters how I treat them. Y'all, it took me some years to get that. He said, it does not matter how other people treat you. It matters how I treat them. See, I'm not responsible for somebody else's reaction. I'm not responsible for somebody else's lack of love or lack of understanding. It is my responsibility to keep giving who I am. Remember, this is authentic meeting authentic. And so now I got to wash off all of those old memories of what people did, what people said, and I got to come back into a place of of finding me once again. So stages, developing in stages, every stage of development will cause an attraction to those that will assist you along the way. So you must, listen, you must have a clear vision for where you're going before you attempt to bring anybody along with you. Whatever it is you desire when you pray, the Lord said that you can have those things, but you need to get a clear vision about whatever it is, okay? So we're gonna look at what, first thing we're gonna deal with time management. That's one of the first things that we're going to look at. Sylvia said, those old memories I need to let go of. That session that Dr. Jenkins is doing today, y'all need to be in there. If you have not read chapter four in the people factor, you need to read it and be in that session. It's going to talk about almost everything that I'm discussing with you guys this morning. Uh, the thing about time management is going to be key. Okay. First of all, you need to develop a rhythm in life. Like when I woke up this morning, I love that rhythm that God had with me. Y'all, for a long time, um, I knew that I had a lot of gifts and skills and all that, but I still had a lot, I had a lot of procrastination because it was too much. It was like, God, I don't know how I'm gonna do this and where am I gonna find the help that I need? All of those kind of things. And what I started realizing that time management, time managing my time was gonna be key because when I started managing my time and stopped letting all that other stuff come in throughout the day that really has no purpose that, you know, for your destiny, I started realizing that space that I was making, I was making room for something else to come in. So I develop a rhythm. I, I think finding your rhythm in life is gonna, gonna be key. And that means finding what flows naturally for you and to you. A lot of things that you're out there looking for, God already knows it. But if you're getting your natural flow and your natural rhythm, there's going to be a natural rhythm of people starting to come to you. Whoever you are is what you're going to attract. You need, you, you, you need dollars. You need millions of dollars. Where do you find that at? you got to get around millionaires. They may not have the physical millions, but they got the millionaire mindset. So in order for you to get in that flow, see, everything is going to be a rhythm and a flow. See, when you're dancing with someone, you want to find what their rhythm is. Otherwise, you go in there and just start moving or whatever, and then they start moving, and y'all going to be stepping on each other's feet and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. We need to stop. And with God, we want to let him take the lead, and I'm going to develop a rhythm. I woke up this morning. I love the quietness that was there. You know, it was like I got a chance to sit back in the bed and, and read a little bit, prepare a lot of bit, uh, a little bit, getting prepared for the week. I'm developing my rhythm and I love the peace that came along with it. Uh, and then you need to ask the question, what motivates you? See, there's a lot of time that you're gonna spend to yourself asking these questions. What is it that's motivating me? Desmond said, but you have to acknowledge that it hurts in order to heal. Exactly, that's exactly right. Uh, Dorothea, yes, we definitely have to teach people how to treat us. And yes, we are not, they are not our responsibility of how they treat me. It's how I treat them. Exactly, exactly. So time management is going to be key. And see, what, what you're going to notice is this is this is something that I learned in a um I was teaching a singles class, singles ministry. And uh we had some um facilitators to come in uh to deal with our single parents, the our singles about single parenting. 
And I'll never forget one of the nuggets that they dropped. Uh, they were talk they said that every time that you add something new onto your life, time management, you need to release something. Every time you bring something new into your life, you need to release something. Because you can't keep letting everything pile up in your life. And what you're looking for is the rhythm. See, the very moment that um, an introduction to a potential relationship comes in, there's going to be an exiting or repositioning of another one somewhere else. And you got to let things go where they may be. That's why a lot of times we're trying to save old relationships and, and save these old jobs and these old experiences. When you do that, you, you eliminate the, the possibility of this next flow coming into your life. So I'm having to learn a rhythm. I'm having to learn what causes these things to happen with me. Next thing we're going to look at is the four components of behavior. A lot of these attributing to our biological state, uh, our environmental state, our cognitive, the way we think, and our emotions. They all drive us in some place. All of these things are going to be important to developing. And y'all are going to be wondering, what does that have to do with anything? Wax on? Wax off. You got to get that mind straight before you can move forward with anything in life. You've got to get your mind stacked straight. So I've got this little uh, sample schedule here. I'm going to see if it'll pull up for me. And this is something that I use. If y'all don't mind, I'll go back in and let me pull it up right quick. Uh, you got, you, I think it's important that we all get uh, schedules within us to, you know, kind of figure out how we're going to go about doing things. Uh, do, 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 do. Just a second. I thought I had it uh, on there. Mm, there it is. This is what I call like a sample schedule. Come down to time management. Okay. And this, this is the, the design that I have. I'm going to see if I can pull this back up, guys. Get you guys back on the screen here. All right. So when it comes down to time management, I call it the law of pure potential. Everything. Everything's created twice. Everything you're going to do has already been created. Okay. Now it starts with a thought. Now I got to put some feet, the practical plans to it. So this is my daily schedule for the week. Early in the morning, 5.30 a.m., 6 o'clock. It's a little bit earlier than that now because we have the coaching sessions at 6. I have what I call my time of evaluation. That's that 30 minutes that's there where my spiritual man is waking up. I'm not in that space just yet to know what's going on in the real world, but my spiritual man is taking the lead. I, that means I have relaxed for the night. I'm letting God do what he needs to do. And then I'm coming in with what I call my set of 10, 10, 10s. I've got to go in and do some random writing, 10 minutes of random writing, 10 minutes of prayer, and 10 minutes of silence. Silence is where I hear from God. The next thing is, all I'm trying to do is develop some discipline in my life, because otherwise my life will just run and ramp it, doing whatever I want to do. From there, I'm going to go to some form of spiritual motivation. I have early morning motivation. I tend to bring other people into that setting. That's at six o'clock. And now I've even got fitness. Can I get, yes, you can get a copy of this. And then I go into fitness right after I get through with morning motivation. Listen, I know that God is exiting me, taking me in the direction that I need to go in because all of these things are starting to line up in my life. I go in and I do my physical fitness. I do that for an hour in the morning time, eight o'clock every morning now that my schedule has changed. I go in and I do that from eight to about 8.45. Then there needs to be some place of breakfast. Now what I do is I try to, when, I, when I'm on my real schedule, intermittent, intermittent fasting is within me. And I normally won't eat until like 12 or one o'clock. It's only when I get off the schedule that things start going crazy. And then from there, I have a schedule of things that I do. I do some, some professional reading, some podcast. Y'all, this is before you actually get to work. And if your work schedule is different than that, tweak it to where it'll work for you. Then, and what I'm trying to do is show you guys about how to get the wheel of balance working for you. And for those of you that are new, I'm gonna show you that in just a few seconds and I'm gonna open up the lines for you guys. We got to have some professional reading in there so that I can build with my career, my intellect, all of that. I'm gonna go to work. This is a part of me, you know, developing even personally in my life and then the things that I'm responsible for from nine to 12, 12 o'clock, whatever it is that I have as a career, whether it be coaching or on my job, I'm setting aside that time for that. It's gonna be important that I take a break from everything. See, because I've learned a lot in that first three hours. Really, that whole time in the morning, there's a lot of information getting ready to drop on you. So I must take a break in between from everything and everybody. 
Then I come back in for the next three hours. I'm going to come in. Either I'm going to pick back up on whatever it was I was doing at work or my career, or I'm going to come in and develop some social time. Okay. Three o'clock, three thirty. you should be getting ready to shut that evening. I don't care if you get off at five o'clock. You need to be shutting this evening off because you've already got everything else. When you get organ or uh, de uh, developed, when you get organized, your day should be cutting off very early so that you can start getting prepared for the next for the next day. And all of this, you need time of meditation, time to reflect over the day. And y'all got to learn how to multitask because all of these things are coming in while you're cooking, while you're preparing for your family, all of that, and then you're having that family, that social time. All of these things are a part of that sampled schedule as far as when it comes down to relational development. Another thing that we're going to look at, this is going to be the closure of where we are. Uh, we're actually going to go in and look at um, the wheel of balance. And uh, this is where it, all, where it all is, where we are on this next phase. We are developing in this area somewhere. Either you're trying to get organizationally, you're trying to learn some organizational behavior development within your career, in your finances, in your health and fitness, in your social life, your family life, your romantic life, your recreation and fun, your contributions to life. Remember I told you your money is connected to that as well. My personal life and my spiritual life. Somewhere on this thing, I need to organize some stuff and get in place. So the next thing I look at is just journal. We're gonna be talking about this all of the time, getting ourselves in a position to where we journal properly in life. And then we'll go through all of it, uh, talking about success. So where do we start this out? We actually uh, start with just never stop dreaming. That's what I want you guys to take away from today. I don't want you to ever stop dreaming. I want you to know that God has your name in his heart and everything that you've been desiring when you've been praying, God is ready to release those things for you. But you got to get some things in order. You got to position yourself around the right people. You got to open up your heart to receive new things while you're going through the experience called healing. And let me tell you, one of the best ways to heal from something is the moment that God, you know, brings you to a place of deliverance, always go back to say thank you. That's what the leper did with every season of life. And so what I've done, I learned how to give. I, when I tell you I give so much because I can't thank God enough for everything that he's done. So every time there's a need that somebody else has in their life, I'm trying to find out how I can meet that need in every way. Because what happens is God begins to start opening up the window of heaven for me. What do you think you guys came from? I didn't know y'all. Y'all came from a seed that was sown. I learned that what you make happen for other people, God will happen to you. If y'all notice on the back of me, I got a picture of, of my pastor, Bishop Jakes on there. I live by the things that he says. I've been following him ever since, what, 97, 96, 97? Been following him for a long time. And I noticed that his principles work. I don't even have to be in the setting. I don't have to know what Bishop Jakes is doing. My money and my dollars are going there. So the very same things that God makes happen for him, it's always the possibility of it happens with me. So I got to stay, I got to stick among people like that. That helps me to keep my cognitive thinking in the place where it needs to be. And then I need to be listening for other people that's going to be joining me along the journey. And it's going to be, it's going to come from some strange places, guys. And you cannot say, well, that ain't God. I'm afraid of that. You got to open up your mind to the possibility. The more you get organized in your thoughts and in your mind, you're going to welcome all of these new things in. And before long, when I tell you life is going to take you on a journey that you've never seen before. The, uh, there's a saying that I have, the word will work if you work it. These principles that I give you, they will work if you work them. And sometimes you don't even know how to get it working. Sometimes you just, what they say, if you receive the word of a prophet, you're going to receive a prophet's reward. Sometimes you just need to take me at my word, okay? And then sometimes just watch my lifestyle. And from that, faith will kick in. I heard Desmond say something yesterday is that about, you know, um, maybe his, his, he, he doesn't necessarily, um, I can't, I don't want to misquote what he said, but um, uh, there, there were some things that were off key with him and, and it needs to be back in alignment. And when you get those first things right, uh, God begins to start opening up the windows for you. You got to start somewhere. So my walk started with the word of God. I had no idea God had all this in me. If y'all knew me back then, you would you would have been just like me. You wouldn't have never seen none of this in me. 
because I was the quietest, quietest and the shyest and the most scared of people. And it's like, no, you ain't doing this with me. And I, I think I aborted a whole bunch of stuff in life because I didn't think that God wanted to do those things for my life. It was only until I got around eagles like Bishop Jakes that I started seeing the potential inside of me. He started answering questions to things that were going on deep inside of me that nobody else was able to do. And from there, I knew that I wouldn't, wouldn't, I didn't think that I would ever be able to get close to her. I wasn't trying to get close to him. I was trying to get close to the one that he was close to. So I'm not trying to be all up in your business. I'm trying to figure out how this thing works for you. Because if it worked for you, it'll work for me too. So that's a part of the journey that we're going to be on during the month of June. And uh, I want to check the box to see, does anybody have any questions or anything um, I'm not quite sure. We're on, I'm on a new platform, so I don't know if y'all have the ability to raise your hand <laughs> or what, uh, and I can actually bring you on so that we can hear from you. So, But otherwise, if you want to put your comments in the box, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm going to go through and read some of the comments that's already been placed in here that I may have missed uh, somewhere along the way. Um, so if anybody has anything that they'd like to ask, you can actually put it in the chat box. I'll answer it for everyone, or you can actually request to come on on the screen. Uh, how do I go into Dr. Jenkins' class? This comes from Dorothea. I mean, Dr. Jenkins, will you actually send Dorothea a friend request uh, for the people factor? And that's how you'll actually get in. Um, can I get that sample of the schedule? Would everybody like to get a, a sample of the schedule that I have here? And at the bottom of it, there's actually an a, a open one uh, to where you can actually go and write, for, write it for yourself, uh, speak it into reality. Okay, um, uh, that's it. We have to sow where our impartation is coming from. It prospers our life. That is so true. You got to learn how to sow in, in the direction you want to go. Y'all stop being afraid of your dollars. Dollars are nothing but like they're they're like they're an exchange, a medium of exchange. Okay, you can't take ownership over it. It belongs to God, and you got to get it in the flow. If it's stopped up, if your dam is stopped up, it's because you don't have a flow going. And what do I mean by that? If you find yourself broke all the time and you never have enough of what you need, it's because you're not in the flow. You stopped up. You got to get that thing unstuck. I don't care if you start off with five dollars or whatever or whatever whatever. Start somewhere. Okay, uh, Pam say it's the seal, the it's it, and it seals the anointing of that impartate, impartation. That has to be taught to you guys. We're gonna get on a segment on our finances. I think it's gonna be in the month of September, uh, so that leads up to October harvest time, to where I'm gonna teach on the financial side of those things. Uh, yes, when you got in contact, okay, okay, with Bishop Jakes. Uh, yes, ma'am, for the schedule. Yes, I need a schedule. I too would like to join Dr. Jenkins, but Del, uh, Mrs. Dr. Jenkins, Delcina wants to be in there as well. Okay, I can't wait for June session. I feel that it's going to be awesome. Amen. Are you guys ready for this 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 new session that we're getting ready to get into? How can I get information to Dr. Jenkins? Um, uh, Mrs. Dr. Jenkins, Pamela Phoenix wants to get in as well. Okay, so y'all won't. She comes in at four. It's at it's three o'clock our time, four o'clock their time. She's in Atlanta. She's in the Georgia area. Uh, so it is three o'clock every Saturday. So y'all be ready for that. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts, any comments? And are y'all ready for the month of June? Okay. Just while y'all are, are, are chatting in there, uh, all of the sessions are actually free of charge. For those of you that may be brand new, there is no charge for it at all. This is my gift back to God. I got a bigger fish to fry. <laughs> So this is my gift back to God. Uh, we meet Monday through Friday, starting on this Monday, June the 1st, uh, Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock a.m. Y'all, the lines open up at 5.55. And y'all, I don't, I don't know what God is doing, but those ladies are there early, 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 early. I don't know if they just anticipation, all of that, but I'm telling you, it is an amazing thing. Uh, Mrs. Pamela actually uh, put a way to sew on the screen. Uh, for those of you that may have received that for this morning, uh, that, that's up to you. Remember, there's no charge for the program. The only thing we do are donations or anything like that. And all I do is help the radio shows and help these teenagers, other things that we're going to be doing. Like I said, I got a bigger fish to fry, so I'm, I'm ready for that. Um, the way that we get connected, uh, you guys can actually go to uh, Mrs. Pam, if you'll put this on the screen. Uh, go to www.marylanddeniseservices.com. Uh, Again, go to www.marylanddeniseservices.com. 
www.ebonyhoffman.com and register. Please don't feel that because you were in the previous sessions that you automatically will get a invite to join into the June. I want you to take responsibility. I want you to make the commitment to say, yes, I wanna be a part of the program. Go out there to the website, register for it so that you can actually get on the mailing list. That's one thing I wanna teach us is accountability for things. And, uh, and I don't, because I don't wanna be sending it out to people that don't want it. Uh, another thing is that will happen with this MarylandDServices.com. Yes, another thing that will happen is that y'all always get all the PowerPoint presentations when I do them, uh, any templates that I have, you guys will do them. Tweak those things, do what you need to do. Uh, God has already blessed me abundantly with it. So it's not like I'm taking ownership over anything that you know God has given to him. Because I know y'all are working in professional settings. You guys are needing some type of, you know, maybe a template of something to go by. Make it change it. Do it whatever you want to do. Share it with us. Let us know how you made a change with that. We'd like to see that as well. But all of the classes, they start properly at six o'clock a.m. The, the doors open, the, the Zoom uh, call starts, uh, opens up at 5.55, but we start properly at six o'clock. We teach discipline. We are not on CP time. We have to learn discipline. Now y'all pray for me when it comes down to ending them classes because I get too excited and we're going on and on and on, but they're normally supposed to be for 45 minutes, but I always was, just make allowance from six o'clock to at least about five, uh, 6.55 because I do have to be on for morning motivation at seven o'clock. Um, other than that, um, I think that's it. If no one else has any questions, y'all excited about? I'm excited about this one. This is a, a new one that I'm actually teaching, but it's something that God has been teaching me for a while. There have been some, some things that I have desired from God, and it was only until I got my mind organized. You got to let your yes be yes and your no be no. Sometimes we're not receiving things. James said, because we ask the miss, we ask for the wrong reason, and we, we asked in the wrong season. You're not ready seasonally for that particular thing. Why? You got too many interruptions. You don't know where, you know, you got to start getting things in order. One of the things, I'm going to close on this. One of the things that I have learned about myself is that if, when God gets ready, I see them coming in already. When God gets ready to start a new something with me, he always ends an old thing. He always ends the season before. And that means God shuts doors. Um, you know, sometimes he, he, he closes, closes the books. It's like a new year starting. Uh, the quarter is, is, has ended. He closes the books on it. And then what we do is we go in and make a recompense. What are we pulling from that? What are we leaving? What are we throwing away? And then, then anytime God brings something new, there is a stage of delegating because if you're going to take the people along with you that's going, you need to be able to delegate those things because you're not going to be able to handle everything. And to be honest, I do believe God's going to do some big things with you that you're going to have more than enough. It's kind of like when they got ready to pull in them boats, they had to keep pulling them in, keep pulling them in because the harvest was coming good. All because Peter cast his net on the other side. I say to you, do something different than what you've done before in order for you to get something that you've never had. God has an amazing way of blessing you just by the simplicity of the word of God. That's the strongest thing I got to give to y'all is the word. It's just the practical experiences that I've gone through that makes it a little bit more relevant. Amen. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you guys on next week, bright and early, Monday morning, six o'clock. Um, those of you that register, I will definitely, Dr. Jacob Pamela, please email me. Amen. They're registered for June. All right, Dr. Jenkins said to email her. Uh, uh, please email me at dr.dr.nisaj at gmail.com so that she can have your information. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to say thank you to everyone. I thank God for the partnership with each one of you. I do believe that we are really on a journey getting ready to reach some new heights in life. And uh, we're going to see some things that we never saw, only things that we've only dreamed of. I leave this with you. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered into your heart just yet, the things that God has prepared for you, but he said he will reveal it by the Spirit of God. Stay connected and stay tuned to what God has for us all. Y'all, don't forget to go out there and register free of charge. Just go out to the website, register for it, and let's get ready for this session. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for joining on today, and I look forward to seeing you soon.